Well, hello, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and once again, we are looking at fractions as part of our study of Unit 3. We're in our home links, 3.7, comparing and ordering fractions. So let's take a look at problem number 2. Now, you would think that I'd start with number 1, right? But if you have already tried uh, the math journal assignment and or you watched the video tutorial that I made on uh, the math journal assignment for 3.7. Problem number one, where you are comparing fractions with like denominators, will be a walk in the park. So let's look at problem number two, which is a little trickier. Here we have unlike denominators, meaning that all the numbers on the bottom are different. Okay. So what we have to do here is we have to think in terms of... Uh, equivalent fractions, okay? Now, the, before we can do that, we have to start thinking in terms of, like, the size and scale of each fraction in general, okay? So, let's start with the easy ones, 3 fifth and 9 tenths. So, when I look at my number line, so my number line is broken in half between 0 and 1. So, logically, my halfway point would be one half. And I'll write that right here. One half. Okay? One half as a fraction can be made equivalent for any number of other fractions, which we'll get to later. Okay? So I'm looking at fifths and tenths. Fifths and tenths. So when I think of nine tenths, for example, okay, nine tenths is pretty far up that number line. Nine-tenths would be probably somewhere, oh, let's say right here, okay? Nine-tenths. Now, how would I compare that to, say, three-fifths? Well, I can make three-fifths into an equivalent fraction, right? Okay, comparing five to ten, five is half as big as 10, which means if I want to create an equivalent fraction of 3 fifths into tenths, I would have to multiply 5 times 2 to get 10. Okay, So I'm going to multiply the numerator just like I would the denominator. So 3 times 2 gives me 6, 5 times 2 gives me 10, 3 fifths is equivalent to 6 tenths. Now, where does that compare to, say, 9 tenths? Well, 6 is smaller than 9, so I would say it'd be somewhere over here. Okay? And I know that to be true because another way of thinking about 1 half is I could also convert that into tenths. How many tenths are in one half? Well, I would use the same formula that I did right here. I would multiply one half times the same number to get to some number in tenths. Now, two times five gives me ten. So I would multiply one times five, my numerator, to get my new numerator, which would also be five. That's five tenths right there. Okay? So another way of thinking about one half is that is equivalent to five tenths. And when I compare that to six tenths and nine tenths, I know that those fractions are plotted correctly. Ugh. Let me fix that nine. I can do better than that. That's better. All right. So. I've got three fifths taken care of, I got nine tenths taken care of, but now I have a fourth and a twelfth. So again, I'm comparing two fractions. So I need to think about what are they compared to, to each other, okay? So I can create an equivalent fraction that will make a fourth uh, be equivalent to a fraction in twelfths by using the same formula, the same approach, okay? One-fourth is equivalent to twelfths because four times three gives me twelve. So I would multiply the top number, one, by three, 
So that means that it would be 3 twelfths, okay? Now why is that useful? So first of all, where would I plot 1 fourth on this number line, okay? Well, 1 fourth is halfway between 0 and 1 half. So here's where I would put 1 fourth. 1 fourth, of course, being equivalent to 3 twelfths. Okay, so then where does 5 twelfths fall? Okay, well again, it might be useful to know what is the equivalent fraction in twelfths to 1 half. Okay, so again, just like I did over here with multiplying 1 half times 5 to get 10, I would take 1 half and convert it to twelfths by multiplying 2 times 6, because 2 times 6 gives me 12 and of course, on the top, I'd multiply 1 times 6, and that would give me 6 twelfths, 6 twelfths being my equivalent fraction. So again, when I compare 1 half to twelfths, that would be the equivalent of 6 twelfths. Now my last fraction here is 5 twelfths, 5 twelfths. Well, that would be somewhere between 3 and 6. Well, 3, 4, 5, I would put 5 twelfths right here. So let's look at our number line again. Okay, I started at zero. My first fraction is one fourth, which is equivalent to three twelfths. Then I have five twelfths, which is less than six twelfths, which is the equivalent of one half. Okay. Then I have my six tenths, which is another way of thinking about three fifths. And then I've got nine tenths at the far right. So let's circle up all the original fractions. We had one fourth, we had five twelfths, we had three fifths, and then we had nine tenths. So there, my friends, we have ordered those fractions from smallest to largest. So I just need to write them down again up at the top, like so. Smallest would be one fourth, followed by five twelfths, followed by three fifths, and then ending with nine tenths. And that's my friend, is how we go about using equivalent fractions to help us compare and order fractions of unlike denominators. Okay? Try problem number three, and then double back to problem number one. At that point, problem number one will be so easy you can't even stand it. Okay? And then lastly, don't forget the practice problems down at the bottom, okay? These addition and subtraction problems with uh, numbers in the thousands will help test your metal. Okay, let's try number two. Not number two, it's number six, but it's the second problem right here. 8,210 minus 6,654. Well, number sentences side by side aren't helpful. Let's make it vertical. So I'm going to write my subtraction algorithm underneath the first printed problem, prop, number in our problem, I should say. And of course, when I line those two numbers up vertically, you can see that there's going to be a whole bunch of regrouping. So let's have edits. So I can't subtract 4 from 0, even though your brain wants to trick you into subtracting 4 minus 0. i got to borrow from the 10s, but there's not enough 10s, so i got to go to the 100s. There's not enough hundreds, so i got to go to all the way to thousands. I'm going to take one of those thousands. So now I have 7,000 and now 12 hundreds because I added one group of 1,000, which is 10 hundreds, plus two hundreds, giving me 12 hundreds. But wait, i got to borrow a group of 10 tens. A hundred is just another way of saying 10 tens. I'm going to give it to this one ten, giving me 11 tens. But then again, i got to take one of those tens because one ten is the same as saying ten ones, okay? Now again, when I look at uh, these numbers at the top, I have just deconstructed 8,210 to become 7,000 and 1,100 and 100 and... 10. And if I add those all back together, I get my original number. Okay? So let's just subtract the difference. 
10 minus 4 gives me 6. 10 minus 5 gives me 5. 11 minus 6 gives me 5 as well. And then 7 minus 6 gives me 1. So my grand total is 1,556. I made it too big. I couldn't read my answer. There we go. Beautiful. I could do this all day long. All right. Because I don't have all day long, I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. So, friends, if you have more questions, uh, please reach out to your math teacher. That's what they're paid for. Otherwise, we will talk again soon. Thanks.